This is the simple, short, little Game Boy game I made. I had a lot of fun learning how to make a game for the Game Boy, and I thought it'd be fun to look back on the development process and talk a little bit about how it was made. So, my project began where pretty much all programming starts, with a little Hello World demo, or in this case, Hello Game Boy. All I did was follow an online tutorial. Uh, now, I had a brief introduction to assembly language way back in college, but I still had a lot to learn, and I knew nothing about programming for the Game Boy specifically. So, what's it like programming in assembly language? You have to do everything yourself. Like, the Game Boy doesn't even understand what letters are. It really is like starting from scratch. And just to reiterate, like, this is all copied directly from the tutorial. I barely understood what was going on at this point. But all you need to make a video game is to be able to put pictures on a screen and to be able to move those pictures around. So, for the next step, I learned how to move the words around. For this step, I'm just learning the fundamentals of assembly language programming. Uh, all computer programming is made up of three basic principles. Loops, conditionals, and math. That's pretty much it. So here I'm learning how to do all three in assembly language. I use math to change the position of the text on the screen. I use loops to continuously change the position of the text. And I use conditionals to check when to put the text back at the top of the screen as in, if the words go off the bottom of the screen, then move them to the top of the screen. So, now that I understand how to do the basics, it's time to leave the tutorial and start making the game. The first thing I did was learn how to draw the background. So this involved taking the artwork and converting it to a format that the Game Boy understands, and then loading that into the game, and then loading it from uh, the game cartridge, into video memory and displaying it on the screen. Uh, it looks really cool because, you know, at this point it's already kind of looking like a video game, uh, even though it's not doing anything. It's essentially a static image at this point. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this wasn't too hard of a step, difficult, it wasn't too difficult of a step to go from the Hello World to this. The Game Boy hardware uh, uses different layers to draw stuff to the screen. In the last step, I got the background layer to draw on the screen, and in this step, I'm adding my first sprite in the object layer. What the Game Boy calls objects, we now refer to nowadays pretty much as sprites. So, I got my little guy drawn on the screen. He doesn't move yet. I didn't learn uh, <laughs> input or, or anything. Uh, but yep, just put him on the screen. For my next step, I implemented the uh, left-right arrows on the, uh, the D-pad and then had them move the character around. Now, as you can see, <laughs> there's no collision detection or anything. So you can just uh, walk right off the side of the screen or walk through the bricks. Yep, it's pretty much just uh, moving pixels to the right or moving pixels to the left, but it's a start. For my next step, I loaded two objects into memory and then uh, replaced them on the screen one after another to make it look like the little guy is animated or bouncing up and down. He still just walks left and right, but now it looks like uh, he's kind of alive. He's got a little, got a little groove going on. So I already added functionality for the left and right arrows. So this for this step, I just added the same functionality for moving up and down. Uh, there's still no collision detection. It's basically just a little guy on top of a picture. Uh, but yeah, it's just kind of a proof of concept to watch him move around the screen. The next step was adding collision detection. The character starts feeling like he's actually part of the world. He can no longer pass through bricks. It now has like a solid foundation. And all this is is um, as you move, uh, I check the position of the character to see if he's standing. How do I do it? See if he's colliding with uh, a brick in the in the uh, the background map. Yeah, it's pretty simple. So now that I've got a uh, collision with the bricks done, the next step was to implement collision with the spikes. <laughs> uh, so I only wanted collision detection from the, from the bottom of the spikes. So the idea is if the little guy runs into the bottom of the spikes or the left side of the spikes or the right side of the spikes, 
then nothing happens. You just kind of bonk into him. But if you hit them from up above, he'll pass through them. And then at some later point, I'll add uh, like uh, hit detection, enemy hit detection, and uh, he'll hit the spikes and that'll cause him to die. But yeah. As you can see, it's really choppy when the little guy moves around. And that's actually because of a bug. And I don't fix it till the next version. So the only thing different in this update is that I fixed the choppy movement. What was happening was I was running out of time to draw uh, sprites to the screen, to draw stuff to the screen. So the game Boy, I have my game updating at 60 frames per second, which means <laughs> I have to get uh, I have to get all the logic done and all of the screen updates done in less than one sixtieth of a second. And if I run out of time, then the Game Boy just kind of shrugs its shoulders and says, well, guess I'm not updating the screen, which causes that choppy look. So all I had to do was uh, do the drawing first, tell the screen to update first, it just kind of reorder things, and then do the logic second. This is where I implemented gravity. Now, I did not implement jumping yet, so instead, I just had a little, uh, I just used the up arrow as kind of a, a test, testing button, so if I hold up, he just slides up the screen, and then when you let go, gravity takes over and pulls him back down. And it was very important to me to have a, a real good, smooth uh, gravity function. I wanted to, you know, start falling a little slowly and then pick up, you know, start going faster and faster, just like in real life. And I'm really happy with how it came out. All right, so this update came many, many months after the last update. I think like four months. What happened was... I got really confused with how I was going to implement jumping. I don't know. Because of the way I am, I insist on, on doing things a specific way. I don't like taking shortcuts. And I just couldn't figure out how to do a good jumping algorithm in on the Game Boy in assembly language. Eventually, I realized I was being ridiculous, and I wanted to make some improvement. So I just implemented, in this update, I just implement a super basic, kind of a cheating, cheating jump uh, button. So when you press the A button, yes, he does jump, but it's not a it's not a nice parabolic, or you know, a nice it's not a nice arcing jump. He just kind of shoots into the air, and then gravity takes over. And does gravity take over? I think you just go fall back down. You go straight up, straight down. There's no uh, no gravity or anything. But I just wanted to get it implemented so that you know it feels more like a video game now. You have control over the little guy. You can walk left, you can walk right, right, and you can jump. And that helped me uh, push forward to the, implement the next thing I wanted to do. And a few months later, I finally buckled down and actually implemented jumping the way I wanted. And it came out perfect. Uh, so I turned off animation at this time just so I could like get a really good view of what the jumping looked like without being distracted by a little bouncing guy. And yeah, it uh, came out perfect. And really, the code for it wasn't isn't the best i'm not completely happy with it i did kind of brute force some of the algorithm but uh done is better than perfect and i'm really happy that i was able to get this done the next thing i implemented was that the spikes can now kill the player Boop. I, at this point i'm like freaking out because it's really starting to feel like a video game uh, and you have, you know, you have control over the character, and there's a lose case scenario. Um, yeah, so this was awesome. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> it was also this time I was super excited to show uh, show a friend of mine. I have a I have a special cartridge that allows me to load it up on the Game Boy, actual Game Boy hardware, and I hand it to him, and he picks up the Game Boy and he looks at the screen and he kind of squints and says, "Oh man, what am I looking at?" And it's at that point I realize, oh crap, everything that I put into this game switch so far is way too tiny. What looks really big and bright and easy to see on this computer screen that I've been developing on, modern computer screen I've been developing on, is way too small on actual Game Boy hardware. Way too tiny to see. I mean, it looks like this in an emulator, but when I actually played it on the Game Boy hardware, it looked more like this. It was rough. So at this point, I had to make a 
really hard decision. Like I was, cause my plan was always to port my, my original game to the Game Boy uh, and then develop it into more stages so that I'd have a complete game. Uh, but I realized it's really not workable. It really is too small. So I spent a little time trying to uh, increase the contrast of the stuff on the screen. It worked okay. Uh, I tried increasing the size of the character to make him more visible, even if I don't change like the physics in the game or the collision detection in the game. And that was kind of okay, but it was now a different character. Uh, it was just different. And I was really bummed. I was really struggling with what to do. <sighs> finally, I oh, and I was considering just giving up the game and just starting some, starting over again. Uh, finally, I decided, okay, I had an original goal. I'm going to stick with it. I am going to port the game I made, the one stage with this one character, ex exactly as I originally made it to the Game Boy. That's my goal. And I'm going to meet that goal. And then when I'm done with it, I can use the code and everything I learned to make my next game. So after I finally decided that, I was able to move on to the next step. And the next step was to add the ice cream. He doesn't do anything. He just sits there dancing. Oh yeah. Okay, so for this update, uh, nothing nothing has changed. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't look like anything has changed. Uh, but what I did do was I implemented new functionality in my game engine called DMA, uh, Direct Memory Access. It was a completely new concept to me. Uh, from what I understand, the benefit is that the game will now draw to the screen, update the screen more quickly, which doesn't really doesn't really affect uh, this game at all because it's such a simple game. But it was something that's good practice and something I'm I'm sure I would use in the future. So I finally bunkered down and slapped it into the game engine. And thanks to the good tutorials online, uh, it wasn't that it wasn't too hard to implement. Oh man, I implemented my first enemy saw. There he is spinning around. It doesn't do anything, but it was uh, just, I just add the stuff uh, step by step. Uh, the first step is to get him on the screen. And the next step is to make him start moving. And then finally, to add the collision detection. Oh man, every step is becoming more and more like a real video game. <laughs> I'm so excited. Next, I added a second saw and also fixed the speed. There were my original implementation, the saws were moving much too, much too fast. And all I did to add this was, <laughs> I pretty much just copy and pasted the code of the first one. It's kind of cheating. For this update, the good news is I added lasers. The bad news is, oh, they're totally glitching out. So uh, I was freaking out. I had no idea why this was happening. Uh, but my Game Boy programmer friend clued me in that all it is, is once again, I was running out of time during the 60 frames per second update to draw, to refresh the screen. Uh, so all I had to do was change the order of the, when the screen updates and yeah, all fixed. And I also went ahead and implemented uh, collision detection with the lasers. <laughs> It's really close to being done. Uh, I kind of took a break from implementing new stuff and just went through my code and cleaned up a lot of it. I uh, reorganized things. I moved things that were I, things that were copied and pasted or now moved into a single function, stuff like that. I made the code really nice and uh, easier to read and better implemented. At this point, I'm so close. So I'm just uh, flying through the rest of the features. Uh, yeah, I added uh, the score counters, so the round number and the number of tries added at the top left of the screen. And the final gameplay element to add was the, what do I call them, the game over screen? The game over screen and the win screen. And that's pretty much it. And the final step was to add the sound effects. <laughs> It's really cool. Somebody made a Game Boy ROM that lets you adjust uh, like the Game Boy code and it lets you hear 
uh, what the sound effect will sound like right from the Game Boy. And that made it really easy to uh, pick some sound effects. I popped those into the game, and that's it. It was done. Oh, man. This has been such a cool experience. What I love the most... So I, I've been programming and attempting to program little hobby games for uh, most of my life. What I loved about programming in assembly language for the Game Boy is just how close I felt to the like to the hardware, to, to the system itself. There's no libraries, no big operating system. Uh, yeah, it's just me directly controlling the hardware inside the Game Boy itself. It's just really nice feeling uh, so close to what you're working on. <laughs> I know my game isn't very impressive, but I'm super excited about it and super proud of it. Now I want to go to the ice cream.